In the linked video, the most important lattice structures of metals were discussed in more detail. These include the body-centered cubic lattice, the face-centered cubic lattice, and the hexagonal close-packed lattice. Characteristic for these structures is the so-called packing density. The packing density is the ratio of the atomic volume within a unit cell to the total volume of the unit cell. The atoms are assumed to be spheres touching each other. In the following, we derive the respective packing density for the three lattice types mentioned above. To determine the packing density in the body-centered cubic lattice, we consider the space diagonal of the cube-shaped unit cell. The three atomic spheres located on this diagonal are just touching each other. For the sake of clarity, we reduce the size of the spheres in the foreground and show the spheres located on the space diagonal in section. We can now see immediately that the space diagonal C just corresponds to four times the atomic radius R. In the following, we derive the relationship between the atomic radius R and the edge length A of the cube-shaped unit cell. For this purpose, we consider the face diagonal B, which forms the shown triangle together with the two edges of the cube. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can now specify the face diagonal as a function of the edge length. This diagonal corresponds to the square root of 2 times the edge length. Now we take a closer look at the drawn area, which together with the space diagonal C, the face diagonal B, and the edge length, forms a right-angled triangle. At this point we use the Pythagorean theorem again to obtain a relationship between the edge length and the atomic radius. If we put the previously derived relations into this equation, then after some transformations we get the given relationship. So, the edge length of the unit cell corresponds to 4 times the atomic radius divided by the square root of 3. We will use this relationship in a moment to determine the volume of the unit cell as a function of the atomic radius. First, however, we consider how many atoms there are in total within the cubic unit cell. For this purpose, let's look at the atoms cut off at the faces of the unit cell. It can be seen that there is a whole atom in the center of the cube. In addition, the unit cell contains a total of eight corner atoms, each with one-eighth of its volume. Consequently, the unit cell contains a total of two atoms. The volume of an atom is determined by the volume of a sphere with four-thirds times pi times r to the power of three. Thus, the atomic volume of two atoms corresponds to a total of eight-thirds times pi times r to the power of three. We must now put this atomic volume in relation to the volume of the cubic unit cell, which results from the edge length to the power of 3. We now express the edge length by the atomic radius. For this purpose, we use the previously derived relationship. In this way, we obtain the given formula for the volume of the unit cell. If we now put the atomic volume and the volume of the unit cell into the definition of the packing density, we can determine the packing density for the body-centered cubic lattice. Thus, we obtain a packing density of 0.68. Therefore, 68% of the volume in the body-centered cubic lattice is occupied by atoms. The packing density in the face-centered cubic lattice can be determined in the same way as for the body-centered cubic structure. Here, the atoms no longer touch on the space diagonal, but the three atomic spheres touch each other on the face diagonal of the unit cell. The face diagonal C thus corresponds to four times the atomic radius. In the following, we first derive the relationship between the atomic radius and the edge length A of the cubic unit cell. For this purpose, we consider the face diagonal C, which forms with the two edges of the cube the shown triangle. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can now derive a relationship between the edge length of the cube and the atomic radius. The edge length is equal to 4 times the atomic radius divided by the square root of 2. Now we ask ourselves again how many atoms in total are in the unit cell. We can see from the figure that there are six atoms on the surfaces of the cube, half of each volume is located inside the unit cell. This is equivalent to the volume of three atoms. Another eight atoms are located at one-eighth each in the corners of the cube. This results in another whole atom. In total, therefore, the volume of four atomic spheres is located in the unit cell. We determine the atomic volume of the four atoms again by the spherical volume and obtain in this way an atomic volume of 16 thirds times pi times r to the power of 3. We now again determine the volume of the unit cell using the previously derived relationship between edge length and atomic radius. For the face-centered cubic unit cell, the shown formula is obtained in this way. We now calculate the ratio of the atomic volume to the volume of the unit cell in order to determine the packing density. 
In this way, we now obtain a packing density of 0.74 for the face-centered cubic lattice, which means that in this case 74% of the lattice structure is occupied by atoms. Let us now consider the hexagonal closest packed lattice. Due to the more complicated geometry of the hexagonal unit cell compared to the cubic unit cells, the derivation of the packing density in this case would be relatively complex. However, such a derivation is actually not necessary. If we compare the structure of the face-centered cubic lattice with that of the hexagonal closed-packed lattice, we find that in both cases we are dealing with a stacking of densest packed planes. In principle, both structures are built from the same atomic planes, they are just stacked in a different order. You can find more information about this in the video already linked at the beginning. The packing density of the hexagonal closest packed lattice is thus identical to that of the face-centered cubic lattice and has the maximum possible value of 74%.